Okay, so in this video, I'd like to go through an example of direct assembly of the joint equilibrium equations. Okay, so we have a simple portal frame here. There's three members with these properties shown down here. There's a point load or joint load of 15 kips, a distributed load on the girder. There's a fixed boundary condition, in the left column, and a pin boundary condition at the base of the right column. So the first thing we need to do is find the degree of kinematic indeterminacy, or DKI. I won't go through this in, in very much detail in the video, but you can read through the PDF. But for this example, we're going to use the case where we have DKI equals 7, where we have 1, 2, 3 unknown joint displacements at the left joint, and then degrees of freedom or displacements 4, 5, and 6 at the right joint, and then the seventh unknown displacement is the uh, rotation at the support. There's a couple of other modeling choices we could make to have DKI reduced to 4 or 3, but we won't uh, go through those. But for this example, we'll use uh, 7 unknown joint displacements. Uh, thus, we'll look at 7 plus 1 uh, compatibility states. Okay, but first we have the, the joint load vector, which just corresponds to the 7 degrees of kinematic indeterminacy. Okay, so the horizontal displacement of this joint right here, right, was degree of freedom or unknown joint displacement 1. So that's why we drop a 15 into the first entry of uh, p hat. Right, and there's no other joint loads applied for the uh, other, or at and in the direction of the other unknown joint displacements, so they're all zeros. Okay, this is a very easy part of direct assembly. The next is the fixed end force vector P0. This is the compatibility state 0, okay, where we set all of the unknown joint displacements equal to 0 or over constrain the structure. So that's like fixing those three joints where we have our unknown joint displacements. And then we look at our table of fixed end member loads, in this case with distributed load. We look at this case for the girder, right, and we develop fixed end shears and moments. WL over 2, WL over 2 for the shears, right? and then WL squared over 12 for the moments going in these directions. All right? And these assemble directly into our seven unknown joint displacements, or the seven entries of P0. All right? and this is 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. So WL over 2 matches same direction as degree of freedom or unknown joint displacement 2. The numerical value is 7.5. Degree of freedom 3 matches WL squared over 12, where WL squared is the only contribution. Right? So that's 18.75 for W of 1 right? and L of 15. Right? And then 5 and 6 grab these two fixed end shears and moments. Right, and the sign is flipped on the uh, moment because it's going in the opposite direction from the uh, unknown joint displacement, 6. Okay, so that's the, the fixed and force vector. This is pretty easy because there's only one member with uh, member loads, all right, but this gives us an idea of how to uh, assemble P0. And then next we go to the columns of the stiffness matrix. So the first column of the stiffness matrix or compatibility state zero excuse me compatibility state one right is where we have u1 equals one right and all other unknown joint displacements set to zero okay and again this is compatibility state one all right and now we impose this compatibility state where we impose or set u1 equal to one u1 was the horizontal displacement of that that left joint this joint does not rotate all right, this joint over here does not move all right, because it's constrained, and this joint down here at the pin support will not rotate. Then we can draw the deflected shape, looks something like this, all right, and then the girder goes into compression, and this column over here uh, does nothing. All right, there's no motion at its ends. Next, we can label the entries of the stiffness matrix that we're going to find. All right, so K11, K21. K31, the second index is the compatibility state, all right? Then the first index is the 
unknown joint displacement where we're going to assemble our stiffness values, right? So K41, K51, K61, and K71. Okay, so now we can use the fixed end uh, forces over here on the right. All right, so we first look at the column, right? And this looks a lot like this case right here. Turn it 90 degrees, right? And you see that there's a you know, unit displacement at this end, all right? And then we can write the values onto this displaced shape, all right, to uh, do direct assembly. So, so this is 12 EI over L cubed for the column, right? It has this I value and this L, right? And be sure to convert EI to kip feet. So we get 12 EI over L cubed, and then we get a 6 EI over L squared for the moment. There's some other stuff going on in this column down at the bottom, but I'm not writing that because it won't assemble into the uh, K terms that we, we've drawn here, okay? And then for the girder, it goes into pure compression, that's not shown over here on the right, but that's just a simple EA over L at both ends, all right, equal and opposite, just putting this beam into compression, all right? And then there's nothing happening in the, the column on the right, okay? So if we were to add, you know, the contributions into K11, right, we'd have the EA over L for the beam and the 12 EI over L cubed for the column, and that sh those two added together should give us this value, there's nothing happening vertically at this joint, so K21, 0. And then K31 will pick up the 6CI over L squared. And if you crank that out, you, know, you should get 67, uh, 13. And then at the other end, we have K41 is going to be negative E over L because they're going in opposite directions. All right, so we get this value here. And then 5, 6, and 7, there's no contribution. So we get these zeros down here. Okay. Next we have the second column of the stiffness matrix, which is compatibility state two, where we set the second unknown joint displacement equal to one and all the other unknown joint displacements to zero. Okay, so this U2, right, is vertical motion of this joint, right, which is, we set that to one. This joint doesn't rotate, all right, and then this joint over here also doesn't move and this joint down here still doesn't rotate at all. So the column goes into tension, right? The beam goes into double curvature, right? And then the column on the right doesn't move in this compatibility state. And then we can look at the charts over here on the right to determine the fixed end forces and moments for these for this compatibility state on each member okay so again we'll use this case for the the girder right it looks exactly like uh, what we have over here on the the left all right with the unit displacement at the uh, left end all right so we'll pick up a 6 ei over l squared for the girder all right and a 12 ei over l cubed in shear same thing happens at the other end, equal and opposite shear, right? and a 6EI over L squared in the column, or for the girder, sorry. And then this column over here on the left, right, is going to go into tension. That's going to be E over L, EA over L for the column. So then uh, we can directly assemble these seven values. Okay, so K12, right, is zero, all right, because there's no horizontal forces developed at that location. K22 is going to pick up contributions from EA over L of the column and 12 EI over L cubed of the girder. And K32 will pick up 6 EI over L squared for the girder. All right. K42 is zero. There's no horizontal forces there. K52 is going to be negative 12 EI over L cubed because these arrows are pointing in opposite directions. And K62 will be 6 EI over L squared there. And K72 still zero. Okay, so the third column of the stiffness matrix is compatibility state three, right, 
u3 equals 1 and all other unknown joint displacements set to 0. Okay, so this case is a little different from the other two because u3 is a rotation. All right, but we follow the same procedure. All right, we're going to impose a unit rotation of that joint. That's the location of uh, u3. All right, joint, this other joint will not move, and then the support at the pin, or thin support, will not move either. All right, and then we draw the deflected shape. Okay, so these are fixed, fixed beams with no uh, end displacements, just rotation at one end. Okay. Okay, so that rotation's one, this rotation's also one. So now we can use the fixed end moments over here on the right. Okay, and I'll just scroll down a little bit. But for a rotation at one end, we have this case, right? For the girder, right, that looks exactly the same, right? And then for the column, we just turn this uh, 90 degrees, right? And it looks exactly like uh, the column, okay? But then we can start writing in the uh, fixed in moments and shears. All right, so that's 4 EI over L for the column. All right, and then we'll pick up a 6 EI over L squared. All right, and then also a 4 EI over L for the girder. All right, and a 6 EI over L squared for the girder. All right, so again, different EI and L values. All right, um, but, you know, just. Okay, so I didn't draw the the blue arrows yet. Okay, so then we can just match up all the, the forces again, right? So K13 would pick up the 6EI over L squared for the column, all right, and that's that value. K23 will pick up the 6EI over L squared of the girder, all right, which would be this value here. You see that those two numbers are different because the EI and L are all different for the column and girder. Okay. And then K33 will pick up 4 EI over L for the column and 4 EI over L for the girder. Okay, And that gives us this value uh, right here. K43, uh, there's nothing uh, going on here. All right, so that's 0. And I forgot to draw these values, 2 EI over L, all right, you know, from this end back over here. All right. And a 6 EI over L squared there. Okay, so K53 will be negative 6EI over L squared because those two arrows are going in opposite directions. And then K63 will be 2EI over L positive, which goes here, and K73 will be zero. Okay, so the, the remaining compatibility states I'll just draw very quickly. There won't be any uh, voice, but it'll the video will speed through and you can see the results, but you should confirm uh, that you're able to get the numbers shown in the, the PDF. Okay, so now that we've formed all of the columns of the stiffness matrix, which is shown here on the left-hand side, well, here's K, U, 
equal. This is the equilibrium equations we had, right, that we formed, right? So k is the matrix, p hat is this vector, p0 is that vector, all right? And then u is the unknown joint displacements. But we just went through and formed the stiffness matrix one column at a time. All right, there were seven columns because there was seven unknown joint displacements, or dki of seven. p hat we assembled, p0 we assembled from the member loads, okay? So it's a seven by seven matrix, uh, or seven by seven system of linear equations. We could solve doing that is not, or how to do that is not terribly important. But you know we'll we'll talk about it later. But we can use gas elimination, or you know Python packages to uh, do that for us. Okay, but the solution for the nodal joint displacements or for the joint displacements is given here. Okay, for unknown displacements one, two, three, four, five six seven okay and the units that we have here they're you know mixed between length which should be feet right, as well as radians so the degrees of freedom or unknown joint displacement three and six are rotations so those are radians and then one two four five and seven or excuse me one two four and five are length and three six and seven are uh, radians but once we have the joint displacements, we can draw or sketch the deflected shape of the frame and then recover uh, external reactions as we'll go through in another uh, lecture. All right, so here I'll sketch the deflected shape using the numerical values uh, for uh, U1 through U7. Okay, so the joint at the left moves over uh, 0.016796 feet, all right, which um, this is not going to be the scale. All right, but it also moves down a very small amount and rotates negative uh, 0, 0, 001. Okay, so that joint's going to be over here, all right? And then it's going to rotate negative a little bit. It's going to look something. That joint's going to move, be right there, okay? And then based on the values for 4, 5, and 6, we can find where the other joint at the end of the girder moves, all right? It moves about the same amount to the right as the other joint. Also moves down a little bit and has a small negative rotation. All right, so it's gonna look something about like this, all right? And then displacement seven is the rotation of, uh, at the support, and that's negative, and it's gonna be something about like this, okay? And then, you know, th this is not completely accurate, all right, but you know, the Deflected shape will look something about like this, all right? And then I don't have the relative values uh, drawn. Not again, not drawn to scale, right? NTS, all right? Uh, but the you know we want to make sure that the the frame's displacing and the direction of the loads, which you know it is moving to the right, which makes sense for this load, and so on and, and so forth. Okay, so. Uh, but with that, uh, that's the conclusion of this video, and thank you for watching.